In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Father. I was going to say thank you for being here, but you're not here. You're over there at home. Uh, we just have three, four, five, six people, seven with me. Uh, <clears throat> so welcome to the uh, celebration of the Mass especially on uh, this beautiful time of Easter, where we're supposed to be uh, um, rejoi rejo uh, where we're supposed to rejoice um, because Jesus has resurrected. It's a time of hope because God is with us, especially in the Eucharist. And today we especially are joyful. Uh, we are celebrating, as many of you know, um, Mercy Sunday or divine uh, mercy. Uh, so trusting in God's love and mercy, let us ask him for his forgiveness. Let us all say, I confess, I confess to Almighty God, God and to you, and to you my brothers and sisters, and that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, <clears throat> through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, every virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, <clears throat> to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Well, we're going to <clears throat> offer um, this mass for, for all our parishioners, um, all of your intentions, also for uh, the health of uh, Celia Garcia, who's uh, having surgery um, this morning. We pray that everything goes well. And also um, for Pope Benedict, uh, which um, on um, Friday the 16th, I think the 16th uh, was his birthday, uh, he turned 93 years old. So we pray that God will grant him many, many more years in good health. And also <clears throat> we pray in this Mass for the soul of Denise Fernandez, Manuela Silveira, uh, Filomena Silveira, uh, for baby Catalina Camarena, who just passed away. We pray for her and especially for her family. And also for um, the soul of Lola Chavarria, uh, Chavarria which uh, is, uh, was a friend of mine. I know her from when I was in Stockton, St. Linus. So she just passed away. We pray for her and, uh, and for her family. May all day rest in peace. Let us pray to our merciful Father. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindled the faith of the people you have made your own. In Greece, we pray, the grace you have bestowed that all may grasp and rightly understand in what a font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. And now uh, we're going to listen to the Word of God. So hopefully you at home are paying attention uh, because God is going to speak to you even though you're not here. He's going to speak to you right there where you are uh, through the lecture. Please be seated. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. They devoted themselves to the teaching of the apostles and to the communal life to the breaking of bread and to the prayers. Awe came upon everyone, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their property and possessions and divide them among all according to each one's need. Each day they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple area and to breaking bread in their homes. They ate their meals with exaltation and sincerity of heart, praising God and enjoying favor with all the people. And every day the Lord added to their numbers those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good, his love is everlasting. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good, his love is everlasting. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good, his love is everlasting. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good, his love is everlasting. 
everlasting. <clears throat> Let the house of Israel say, His mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, His mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord, Lord for He is good. His love is everlasting. Give thanks to the Lord for He is good. His love is everlasting. I was hard pressed and was falling, but the Lord helped me. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and He has been my Savior. The joyful shout of victory in the tents of the just. Give thanks to the Lord for His good, His love is everlasting. Give thanks to the Lord for His good, His love is everlasting. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done, it is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Give thanks to the Lord for, for he is good. His love is everlasting. Give thanks to the Lord for, for he is good. His love is everlasting. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is his great mercy gave us a new birth to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by the power of God are safeguarded through faith to a salvation that is ready to be revealed in the final time. In this you rejoice, although now for a little while you may have to suffer through various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that is perishable, even though tested by fire, may prove to be for praise glory, and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Although you have not seen him, you love him. Even though you do not see him, now yet believe in him. You rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy as you attain the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A proclamation of the good news according to John. Glory, glory to you, O Lord. On the uh, <clears throat> evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples <clears throat> said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger into the nail marks and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now, a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, since you don't have anywhere else to go and you're stuck at home, uh, this homily is going to be like a half hour, 45 minutes. How is that? Is it okay with you? Well, the people here, they're saying, Father, that's great. <laughs> uh, no, the homily will be very brief, but uh, <clears throat> with a very uh, important message from God, <clears throat> like I said, <clears throat> he... Um, He's the one who speaks to us through the lecture a few minutes ago, now through me. We just have to, to listen to what he's saying. So, <clears throat> I would like to briefly talk to you <clears throat> about the power of faith. Again, the key word here is faith. The phrase, the power of faith. On a... <clears throat> One occasion, this father takes his son to Jesus to uh, <clears throat> heal him because he was uh, possessed by a demon. His disciples <clears throat> have been unable to expel him. So <clears throat> Jesus, uh, a little irritated with uh, the disciples, says, <clears> "Oh, <throat> unbelieving generation, how long must I be with you? So he was not very happy. <clears throat> then the father says, <clears throat> If you can have pity on us <clears throat> and help us. 
Jesus answered him, What do you mean if I can? Jesus asked, Anything is possible if a person believes. Again, anything is possible if a person, what? Believes. Anything is possible, my friends, if the person has what? If the person has faith. That's what I'm talking about, the power of faith. It is uh, <clears throat> possible <clears throat> to be dead <clears throat> and resurrect as Jesus did. That's what we're celebrating <clears throat> in this time of Easter. In today's gospel, <clears throat> the evangelist John tells us that Jesus came and stood in their midst. But how did he do it if the doors were locked? Can you tell me? With what? I'm talking to the people at home. I know you cannot answer me, but you can answer the ones here. With what? What am I talking about? Faith. faith. Yeah, with faith. Uh, <clears throat> because <clears throat> remember, anything is possible if a person believes. Faith. Why were the disciples locked up? <clears throat> well, <clears throat> for fear of the Jews. We too, <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> because of what? <laughs> because of the pandemic, <laughs> are locked up like the disciples. We're not afraid of the Jews, <laughs> but the coronavirus. <laughs> I understand it's sad and hard <clears throat> to see our churches close. It's really sad. You know, I think when I, the procession, you're able to see how the church looks. It's sad, like I've said, I miss everyone. I mean, I'm glad we have some people here. I'm very thankful for being here <laughs> to make me some company, but the mass is not the same, you know? So it's sad that our churches are closed. But Jesus says, <clears throat> don't worry. <laughs> you know, I'm going to go where you are meeting with your family. For Jesus, my friends, it's very easy to go to the walls of your house without even asking for permission to get in. But, 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 to get into your heart, he's going to knock because he is a gentleman. The question is, are you Am I, are we going to open the door? Are we going to do that? I hope. <laughs> what is the only thing that prevents Jesus from going into our heart? Any wild guess? It's a word that starts with an S and ends with an N. Sin. Yeah, sin. Three little letters, okay? Sin. What do you think... <clears throat> is the only thing that can open the door to your heart to Jesus. In other words, what is the key to get in? <clears throat> we did it at the beginning of Mass. We always have to do it. It's a word that starts with an R and ends with an E. What do we ask, what do we always ask Jesus at the beginning of each Mass? So important. To forgive our sins. Okay, so the key <clears throat> for Jesus to get into your heart, not your house, your heart, is repentance, my friend, repentance. That's why <clears throat> Pope Francis recently said this, and I quote, Return to your Father <clears throat> who is waiting for you. <clears throat> the God of tenderness will heal us. He will heal us of the many, many wombs of life and the many ugly things we have done. Each of us has our own." End of quote. There are a lot of people who are hurt, that have no peace, that have lost the joy of living. Let me ask you, <clears throat> do you have at this moment, do you have a guilty conscience? Don't raise your hand. <laughs> do 
Do you have a guilty conscience? You know, my friends, the worst thing that can happen to us is not being infected by the coronavirus that can kill the body. The worst thing is to be infected by the virus of sin, which can kill what? The soul. And I repeat this again because it's important. The worst thing that can happen to us is not being infected by, corona, by the coronavirus that can kill the body. The worst thing is to be infected by the virus of sin, which can kill our soul, our spirit. The worst thing that can happen to us is to harden our heart and not allow God to transform our life. Jesus wants you to have peace in your heart. I repeat again, Jesus wants you to have peace in your heart. That's why when he appeared to his disciples, he said what? Peace what? Peace be with you. And how many times did he say that? Can you tell me? You were paying attention. <laughs> how many times? Three times. Three times. You know, when you tell someone the same thing three times, it must be important. So Jesus, again, wants you to have peace. Mm -hmm. Now, how is Jesus giving us that peace? Well, I think we all know. <laughs> through, <clears throat> one way is through the sacrament of reconciliation. Today, what are we celebrating? You know, a beautiful devotion. We're celebrating Divine Mercy Sunday. So let us take advantage of God's love and mercy. Now, some people are worried that at this moment they can confess to a priest. And I understand. Okay? I understand. It's not easy for you. You know, I've even been asked to do drive-through confessions. I know some parishes are doing that. You know, I respect that, but I'm not going to do that. Okay? Uh, you know, Pope Francis tells us this. This is the right time, <clears throat> the opportune moment, <clears throat> an act of contrition done well, and our souls will become white like the snow. That's enough for God. Okay? You know, <clears throat> the priest is important, don't get me wrong, okay? <clears throat> but not indispensable for God to forgive us. Hmm? If you were to ask Jesus, can you really forgive my sins without a priest? <laughs> he might be careful because he might say to you what he said to the father of the son who was possessed by it, a demon that I mentioned at the beginning of the homily. He might say to you, what do you mean if I can? <laughs> What do you mean if I can? So let's not put limits on God's power to forgive. Remember what he says. Anything is possible for the person who has what? Faith. To the person who believes. What did he say to Thomas in the gospel this morning? You believe because you have seen me. But blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. So my last question. At this moment, how strong is your faith?
And now, talking about faith, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered, dead, and was buried. And rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. <clears throat> Amen. And now casting doubt aside, we praise our Lord in God and humbly ask for the answer to our prayers. For the church, stronghold of trust and the everlasting mercy of God, that the gift of faith be generously shared with all who search for it. We pray. Hear the prayer of your people, O Lord. Hear the prayer of your people, O Lord. For all who answer the call to a life of civic service, that they may be ever mindful of the sanctity of all life, we pray. Hear the prayer of your people, O Lord. Hear the prayer of the people, O Lord. Let us pray also for all those who suffer the consequences of the current pandemic, that God the Father may grant health to the sick, strength to those who care for them. We pray. Hear the prayer of your people, O Lord. Hear the prayer of the people, O Lord. For our brothers and sisters who have died around the world due to the coronavirus, that God raised them up on the last day, we pray. Hear the prayer of your people, O Lord. Hear the prayer of your people, O Lord. For all those who are celebrating this Mass through the social media, may God strengthen them and their faith. We pray. Hear the prayer of your people, O Lord. Hear the prayer of your people, O Lord. For all the intentions that we hold in the silence of our hearts, we pray. Hear the prayer of your people, O Lord. Hear the prayer of your people, O Lord. Let us also pray for the uh, medical professionals uh, who attend to the sick and research the disease. Uh, we pray, pray for grocery and uh, warehouse workers for truckers and farm workers who work to feed our country during this pandemic. 
We pray. Hear the prayer of your people, O Lord. Hear the prayer of your people, O Lord. Holy and loving God, you raise your son from death in the tomb. Hear us and give answer through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now comes your favorite part of the Mass. Um, I just uh, want to thank uh, so many people for their generosity, uh, especially at this time of uh, the pandemic. I was just listening in the, in the radio that there are so many people unemployed, more than like more than 20 million people have applied for unemployment. Uh, if you're one of those, well, you know, have faith, uh, let's trust in God, hopefully things will get better. But I know uh, that many people, they still have a job and, you know, they're being truly blessed at this difficult time. So maybe this is a time for you, you know, to help a little bit more, uh, help your church a little bit more. And even those who are struggling, uh, you know, it's easy uh, to give to God, to your church, to his church that he founded and left for us when um, we have a job and when everything is, you know, going smoothly, okay? Uh, but it's harder, you know, uh, to give when, um, well, maybe we don't know what we're going to eat tomorrow, but, you know, God, I trust you. I don't, God doesn't want you to stop feeding your children, you know, to give to the church. I want to make that clear. But um, even if it's, uh, you know, a dollar or two dollars, the important thing is to give with what? Remember what I was talking in the homily? With faith, okay? Uh, like the little, like the widow, you know, remember when she just gave one coin, you know, for Jesus that was enough because she had faith in God. So I just want to uh, thank you again for uh, your financial support of your church and uh, how you can uh, continue supporting your church. Ideally, um, electronically, I want to thank those who, um, who have um, been doing it through online giving on our website. Hopefully after the pandemic, you continue doing it. And I really, really encourage everyone to do it that way. It's a lot easier, it's so practical. Uh, I, like I've said, I, I do it online. And it's very, very simple, very easy. I get on a, uh, an email every week saying, you know, how much was deducted from my credit card. Uh, so if you have any problems uh, using online giving, just call uh, the office um, and they can, um, we can uh, help you. And the other way you can give is uh, by mailing your envelope uh, to the church and also another way is just by coming to drop off your envelope uh, in, uh, in the office. Uh, there's just slid your envelope through the double doors and we have a box there and, uh, for, for all the envelopes. So again, thank you for uh, your support, for your offering to God, especially in this time that the church really needs you. Age to age, we will love you. Dawning light, we will wake with you. Into night, we will follow you. We will love you, age to age. As the eagle flies to the heavens above, on
Pray, my brothers and sisters, our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. Accept, uh, O oh Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and of those you have brought to new uh, birth that renew by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness to Christ our risen Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is uh, truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but uh, on this day, above all, to love you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he destroyed our dead, and by rising, restore our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, Every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have uh, created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit graciously made holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate the sacred mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. In giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he uh, took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his friend saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. And he also said to them, Do this in memory of me. My brothers and sisters, the mystery of our faith.
Therefore, O oh Lord, as uh, we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Francis of Rome, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant, uh, Francis, our Pope, and Myron, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, we especially uh, pray for uh, Denis Fernandez, Manuel and Filomena Silveira, Catalina Camarena, and Lola Chavarria. And to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There, we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Now let us say the beautiful prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the 
My brothers and sisters, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worth the choice. Bring your hand and feel the place of the nails, and do not be unbelieving, but believing. Alleluia. And as usual, I, for those who are at home, and can now receive uh, Jesus sacramentally, I uh, encourage you to join me uh, in doing a spiritual uh, communion. So just uh, repeat the prayer I'm going to uh, read. Then as I'll say, my Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things. And I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. And you the branches remain in me as I remain in you. You will bear great fruit in me. A new commandment I give you, even as I have loved you now.
Let us pray. Grant, uh, we pray, Almighty God, that our <coughs> that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts to Christ our Lord. Amen. And now <coughs> I'm going to uh, invite you to join me in a prayer um, to uh, Our Lady uh, this special um, time. Uh, we have Jesus, the gift of eternal life. Um, thanks to a man, Jesus, but also thanks to a woman, Mary. So let's not forget about woman. Huh? Uh, so I really encourage you, uh, especially this time where you're at home, you know, to pray. Uh, pray the rosary. Uh, obviously, the prayer per excellence is not the rosary, okay? It is the Eucharist. So I hope, you know, you can uh, join us uh, every Sunday at this time. Invite your friends. Share uh, this Mass with your friends. It's a way to evangelize. Uh, so this prayer, uh, the Eucharist is excellent, but also, you know, the rosary. Pray to our Blessed Mother. She is going to uh, intercede for us, not just for this pandemic, this disease that is affecting so many people, but also for whatever you're going through, okay? So let's always trust not only in Jesus, but in his mother, because she gave us Jesus, okay? So let us, with great devotion, say this. Queen of the Angels and Mother of the Americas, uh, we fly to you today as your beloved children. We ask you to intercede for us with your son, as you did at the wedding in Cana. Pray for us, loving Mother, and gain for our nation and world, and for all our families and loved ones, the protection of your holy angels, that we may be spared the worst of this illness, for those already afflicted, we ask you to obtain the grace of healing and deliverance. Hear the cries of those who are vulnerable and fearful. Wipe away their tears and help them to trust. In this time of trial and testing, teach all of us in the church to love one another and to be patient and kind. Help us to bring the peace of Jesus to our land and to our hearts. We come to you with confidence, knowing that you truly are our compassionate mother, health of the sick and cause of our joy. Shelter us on the mantle of your protection. Keep us in the embrace of your arms. Help us always to know the love of your Son, Jesus. Amen. And just uh, a few uh, announcements. First of all, um, again, I want to thank those who are um, viewing the masses through uh, Facebook. But uh, many people might not have a Facebook account. Uh, so what they can do is uh, uh, subscribe to uh, our YouTube uh, channel, which uh, we have. Uh, last time I checked, uh, there's like 70, um, 70 uh, people who have su subscribed. So I want to thank those. Uh, <clears throat> But if we want to um, uh, live stream the Mass, like we're doing now through Facebook, which is better to do it uh, live, um, we, didn't, we need at least 1,000 subscribers. So I know we have more than 1,000 people coming to uh, church, members of this community. So I, again, really encourage you to subscribe to our, uh, our channel. So if you uh, just go on YouTube, it's very simple. You're going to see the, uh, the
the icon of, uh, of uh, uh, St. Francis of Rome. Uh, you will recognize it. Uh, we already have some masses recorded. So, uh, so just go and click uh, where it says subscribe. And uh, it's, it's very simple. And I can invite your friends so that they can subscribe. And then uh, again, we will be able to live stream uh, the mass, not only on Facebook, but also on YouTube, which again, is a lot easier for some people who don't have a Facebook account. So that's gonna be your homework, okay? So please, please do it. Um, and uh, also, another thing, uh, very important, muy, very important, okay? Please um, <clears throat> fill out the form uh, of the census. Um, have you, let me see, let me ask, um, Okay, have you done your census? I'm gonna put him on the spot. Yes. Oh, like he hasn't done his homework, but he's gonna do it today. <laughs> okay, uh, so I know some of you probably done it, uh, but please, I really encourage you to do it. It is our duty as, uh, as Christians. You know, especially in this time of the pandemic, again, there's, uh, there's gonna be more need. Uh, a lot of people who are gonna need uh, financial help, who are going to benefit from uh, uh, doing uh, the census. It's so important to make ourselves count. You know, just let me uh, briefly read three reasons why we should uh, fill out the form. Um, first of all, direct billions of dollars in federal funds to local communities for schools, roads, and offer public services. That's one of the, uh, that's how this money will be um, used if we register. Also, it will help your community prepare to meet transportation and emergency readiness uh, needs. Also, it will determine the number of seats each state has in the U.S. Uh, House of Representatives in your political representation at all levels of government. So again, it's very important that you that you register is very simple. I already did it. I got this form uh, in the mail, so I just um, it gives you it gives you the instructions how how to how to do it. It's very very simple. So again, please um, fill out the registration uh, for the census. And if you already done it, well, then ask someone, uh, invite someone that has not done it to do it, please, okay? And uh, the last thing, I just want to uh, thank the people that have been bringing uh, food uh, uh, here at the, uh, at the office. Uh, like I said, I mean, it's obvious that there is gonna be a lot of people in need. I hear that the food banks, uh, you know, they need food, okay? A lot of people have lost their jobs. You know, again, there are so many people so lucky. You know, I have a job, I have something to eat. Maybe some don't know what they're gonna eat tomorrow. So what are we gonna do? Just pray? No. You know, the prayer is important, but that's not enough, okay? We need to help them. Uh, so the church, what we're doing, because just because the church is closed, that doesn't mean uh, we're not doing anything here. No, we're open for business. Uh, the uh, mission of Jesus continues especially with the most vulnerable, the poor, who needs uh, uh, at this moment. So what are we doing? We are every Monday and uh, Thursday, we are giving out food from St. Vincent, which I really thank them. You know, all the food that you bring uh, when the church was open? Well, we have some uh, food uh, store uh, with St. Uh, Vincent's. So I wanna thank them, but that's not gonna be enough. This is why, um, again, I wanna thank the people who have been bringing food, but we need more. So just come uh, to the office uh, Monday through uh, Friday from nine until um, 12 p.m. and just knock at the door and um, someone will open uh, for you. And you know, we have the office not open to the public, but we are answering the phone. So just call and we're here. Uh, uh, at your service. And also, just for your information, we're gonna start 
uh, a group of uh, leaders in our, our parish, which I want to thank them uh, in advance for helping us do this. They're going to be calling our parishioners. We already called some people who are um, in that group, which are more at risk. Uh, and, and you know, they're so happy. I've been calling them, and they're so happy to hear from the church. Uh, but I cannot make all these calls. So that's why I'm asking some of the leaders here in our church to uh, help us uh, make these calls. And we're just going to ask you, you know, how are you doing? If you need food, if you need to talk to a priest. Again, the church has not forgotten about you, and God has not forgotten about you. Okay? That's the good news. Um, so uh, you will um, get a call pretty soon. Uh, and again, thank you for bringing your food. And uh, also, okay, I want to thank the people who recorded. We have um, three or four people who are going to be helping Eric and Alvaro. Uh, so I want to thank them, uh, Tenok, um, Christian, and uh, you know the people that are going to be helping us. And I want to uh, thank you for um, uh, helping us do the, the reading in the choir. So thank you for, for being here. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now you may go in peace to do what? To believe, to have faith in Jesus who has risen from the dead. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks to, God. to God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia. And now we're going to sing, okay? I cannot hear you because you're at home, but you better sing, okay? <laughs> Yeah. Uh -huh. 